Right friends, welcome back to Why and How. The first issue is, there are news reports that extensive bleaching occurred in Great Barrier Reef. Previously, we discussed about the reasons. The main reason is, raise in ocean temperatures, but now other problem compounded. The other problem is, floods due to cyclone in Australia. Because of the runoff of pollution, because of the floods in Australia, the coral reef destruction compounded the runoff mixed with a lot of sediment and which carried harmful nitrogen also. So, this became another major problem for the survival of this coral reef. So, extensive bleaching occurred in Great Barrier Reef. One reason is rise in ocean temperature. Second one is runoff mixed with harmful nitrogen because of cyclone in Australia. And the bleaching is called terminal stage when there are little chances of recovery. Olive Ridley turtles nesting was the highest in 16 years. During the past 16 years, this nesting of this olive ridley turtles was the highest and 3,85,000 turtles made it to the shore to lay the eggs. And Rushikulya and Gahirmatha beaches in Odisha are the world's largest rookery of ridleys. And please don't forget, the annual nesting ceremony of olive ridley turtles is known as Aribada. And on an average, a turtle lays around 100 eggs, but the mortality of the eggs is very high because of predators like birds, dogs, crabs and human activity like fishing nets also cause more damage. So, please look into this, Gahirmata and Rushikulya, these are famous for olive ridley turtles for laying of the eggs and they normally choose the inlets of rivers. Basically, they want less saline water. So, when river enters the sea, normally at that junction, the salinity will be less. So, the laying of the eggs, normally they prefer the areas where salinity of the area is less. Leaving this discussion here, let us look at another issue. Supreme Court bench ordered deactivation of telecom tower in Gwalior within a week. What is the reason? This is in response to a complaint of a cancer stricken patient in Gwalior. And if you look at the radiation figures, World Health Organization classified radiation from mobile telephones as possibly carcinogenic to humans in 2011. But a causal relationship is very far from establishing. On the scientific side, one main reason is there are challenges in availability of data over time periods of longer than 15 years. That is one reason. And when you look at the radiation exposure limit guidelines, World Health Organization and International Commission of Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection or ICNIRP, they issue the guidelines and they have used available scientific evidence to provide the exposure limit guidelines. And now in our country, Department of Telecommunications has set up the safety norms and last year, Department of Telecommunications told the Supreme Court that it had tested 3.3 lakh towers and found only 212 exceeding the radiation limits and collected rupees 10 crore as penalty. And please don't forget, India has over 100 crore mobile telephone subscribers and around 12 lakh mobile phone towers. Right? Look into the next one. Railways operating ratio is deteriorating. That is the cause of concern. Railways operating ratio in 2014-15 was 91 percent. It went up to 95 percent in 2016-17. That means, what is the meaning of operating ratio? Operating ratio means railways to earn 100 crores of rupees. 
railways to earn 100 crores of rupees is spending 95 crores so to earn 100 rupees it is spending 95 rupees so what is left for its development so this is the million dollar question so in the railways parlance operating ratio of 80 percent or low is considered desirable the operating ratio must be less than 80 percent for efficient railway operations but the biggest worry is it reached 95 percent in recent times because of the implementation of pay commission recommendations that is one reason why this operating ratio increased to 95 percent and at the same time railways is also facing huge pension burden look into the next one in order to expedite online platform e-national agriculture market which was launched in april 2016 central government came up with model apmc act what is apmc apmc is agricultural produce market committee and now center came up with the model apmc act so what are the guidelines the guidelines are in the first phase the states have to ensure single license and a single point of levy of market fee at the state level. So, initially first phase there must be one single license and one single point of levy of market fee at the state level and subsequently it should move towards single license and point of levy of market fee at the national level. So, it should be at the state level first and subsequently at the national level and basically for implementation of electronic national agriculture market this becomes inevitable right friends look at the next one suzuki motor corporation toshiba corporation denso corporation agreed to manufacture lithium ion battery packs in our country and this is significant because government is promoting faster adoption and manufacturing of electric vehicles in india government is promoting faster adoption and manufacturing of electric vehicles and batteries are important component of electric vehicles and if you look at government's program as far as promotion of electric vehicles is concerned government has got one program that is fame india program that is faster adoption and manufacturing of hybrid and electric vehicles in india and it is to be implemented over a period of six years till 2020 that means government will support hybrid and electric vehicles market development and it will also develop its manufacturing ecosystem to achieve self-sustainment by the end of 2020 four focus areas under fame or this is a fame scheme four focus areas under fame scheme or technology development demand creation pilot projects and charging infrastructure right so government has to give more trust for promotion of electric vehicles China has gone much ahead but India is lagging badly in adoption of electric vehicles. The cabinet has allowed financially sound state governments from now onwards state governments which are financially sound and the second point is for infrastructure projects they can directly borrow from the bilateral ODA partners. With India, there are some bilateral partners in official development assistance. One example is Japan, just like this Japan International Cooperation Agency. So, like this, India has got official development assistance partners and from now onwards, state governments can directly borrow money from ODA partners of India. So, here, if this is implemented, state spending on welfare schemes will not be affected and this is also with a view to increase 
ease of doing business in our country. Look at the next one. Third Governing Council meeting of Niti Aayog. Governing Council of Niti Aayog. Please don't forget, it is headed by the Prime Minister and all the Chief Ministers of 29 states will be the members. At the same time, Chief Minister of Delhi, then Chief Minister of Puducherry will also be members along with Lieutenant Governor of Andaman and Nicobar Islands. And along with this group, the Governing Council also comprises some officials. So, this Governing Council meeting was held recently in New Delhi and the Prime Minister has thrown the idea of January-December fiscal instead of present financial year of April-March. And another important aspect is here the Prime Minister urged all the local bodies and non-governmental organizations to achieve the intended goals by 2022. And two important points I would like to tell you. Niti Aayog is working on 15-year long-term vision, 7-year medium-term strategy and a 3-year action agenda. This is one part. And Niti Aayog will come up with a plan for better utilization of district mineral foundation fund. Here the royalty, part of the royalty will go to district mineral foundation fund. So, here district mineral foundations are to be funded from the royalty of mining leases. This is very important aspect and another important aspect is compensatory afforestation fund and these two are very very important from examination perspective. We will discuss in policies and programs and these points were raised in governing council meeting of Niti Aayog by the Prime Minister. Researchers have found that Shigella bacteria, Shigella bacteria, this causes severe diarrhea. The bacteria, this is a Shigella bacteria. This causes a serious diarrhea and normal medicine is ciprofloxacin. And the unfortunate part is it is developing resistance to ciprofloxacin. So, this is another case of antimicrobial resistance and in future because of this resistance in some cases ciprofloxacin will not be effective to treat diarrhea caused by Shigella bacteria and because of this what happens patients are left with no other choice than injectable drugs for such an easily treatable disease. Right, so antimicrobial resistance is on increase. China says that India made Nepal scale down army drill with China. Here you see for the first time the exercises that is military exercises were held. Sagar Mata Friendship 2017. Sagar Mata is the name of Everest in Nepali and here China says because of pressure from India, the size of the military exercise was scaled down and at the same time because of the pressure, it was also changed the venue to a military school, right. So, this is the news item and please don't forget Sagar Mata exercises, these were the joint military exercises between China and Nepal, right, look into the next one. This is picture for Sagar Mata Friendship 2017. Then Massive Ordnance Air Blast Bomb known as Mother of All the Bombs. This MOAB, this is the mother of all the bombs and this was recently used on suspected IS militants in Afghanistan's Nangarhar province. And it is the mixture of TNT and aluminium powder. And it is the largest non-nuclear weapon ever used, right? So, it was in fact tested in 2003 and if used in urban warfare, its impact will be huge. And another important aspect is it can destroy tunnels and caves. That is one important aspect. And it is designed to explode above ground and creates a massive blast and it takes atmospheric oxygen, right? 
So, these are important aspects of this massive ordnance air blast bomb or MOAB bomb. Look into the next one. Supreme Court invoking the maxim, let justice be done, though the heavens fall. By invoking this maxim, Supreme Court used its extraordinary constitutional power under Article 142 to revive criminal conspiracy charges against some leaders. And here I have given the chronology, you can go through it. But two most important aspects are Article 142 is to do complete justice, Supreme Court can interfere. And Article 361 is basically no criminal proceedings against the president or the governor of a state. Prime Minister Narendra Modi decided to end the privileged VIP culture. And here from May 1 onwards, only emergency vehicles such as ambulances, fire engine trucks and police vehicles will be used with blue lights. They will only be allowed to use blue lights and red light will not be permitted on any vehicle. Right? Look into the next one. The Public Health Foundation of India has lost FCRA license. What is meant by FCRA? FCRA is the Foreign Contribution Regulation Act. One important aspect is it, this is regulated by the Ministry of Home Affairs. This is one important aspect. Second point is recently there are allegations that government is working with iron hand on FCRA on non-governmental organizations. And when it comes to Public Health Foundation of India, it is one of the reputed non-governmental organizations in our country, primarily supported by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and PFHI, as I have already told you, country's largest public health advocacy group. And what are the allegations? The allegations are, it used the foreign contributions to lobby parliamentarians, media and the government on tobacco control issues. And at the same time, there are also allegations or violations with regard to remittances to foreign countries from FCRA account. Right? Look into the next one. New Zealand announced that it is introducing tougher requirements. United States of America, New Zealand, Australia, Singapore, one country after the other are tightening immigration. If you look at New Zealand, New Zealand's total population is just 48 lakhs and 71,000 are immigrants. Now, it is a tightening on immigrants. The policy is just like American first, now it is Kiwis first and all these things signal to the difficult times for software sector in addition to automation and robotics. Look into the next one. Before going ahead, I have given here the history with regard to the regulations by New Zealand. Please go through them. If you look at the next one, Chinese President Xi Jinping has announced a military restructuring of People's Liberation Army. Basically, more emphasis will be given on cyberspace, electronic and information warfare and the strength will be reduced by 3 lakh. Right? Look at the next one. President Donald Trump signed an executive order by American, higher American. And because of this, it will tighten guest worker visas such as H-1B. And at the same time, it also requires American agencies to buy more goods and services from U.S. companies. The order has not curtailed 85,000 H-1B visas every year. Out of 85,000 H-1B visas every year, Indians are getting more than half. Now, instead of curtailing the number of visas, the existing lottery system will be replaced by merit-based approach. Look into the next issue. Australia will abolish a popular work visa used by over 95,000 temporary foreign workers and most of them are Indians. Right? So, this is known as 457 visa that allows businesses to employ foreign workers for a period of up to 4 years in skilled jobs. 
where there is a shortage of Australian workers. What I mean to convey is one country after the other are tightening immigration. Right? Please look into this. This is the map of Australia with important cities, Sydney, Melbourne, Perth, Canberra. And when you are looking at Australia, please do not forget the great barrier reef adjacent to Australia, which is being destructed because of various forces. Bharat Biotech International Limited in Hyderabad. And this is the vaccine phase 1 trials. Phase 1 trial of Zika virus vaccine MR766. So, it will start phase 1 clinical trial for Zika virus vaccine in two centers in India next month. And last week we discussed about malaria vaccines, two names of malaria vaccines at the same time Ebola vaccine and this is about the clinical trials of Zika virus vaccine. Right. So, Zika virus, it is a mosquito borne virus transmitted by AIDS Egypti and one important aspect is this AIDS Egypti mosquitoes can also cause chikungunya, dengue and yellow fever and please do not forget two diseases, microcephaly and gallian bear syndrome, this is nervous disease, these two diseases are most likely associated with the Zika virus. Microcephaly is a shortening of the brain. gallien bear syndrome is a weakening of the nerves. India may impose anti-dumping duty. Here, more than the news item, you should have clear idea about what is anti-dumping duty. The investigations, please understand, the investigations with regard to anti-dumping duty as well as countervailing duty or anti-subsidy duty the investigations with regard to the imposition of these two duties is undertaken by the Directorate General of Anti-Dumping and Allied Duties, which is under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. But the final decision of imposition or you can say finally, Ministry of Finance imposes these duties and the three World Trade Organization compliant duties. I listed here safeguard duty, anti-dumping duty and countervailing duty. I explained number of times, so I am skipping this. Those who have doubt, please go through this PPT. The ambitious program of Bharat Mala. Here, at present, all of you are familiar with NHDP. NHDP, number of phases are there, basically for improving national highways. And please look into this map. All of you are familiar with the golden quadrilateral connecting four metropolitan cities as well as north-south corridor, east-west corridor and these corridors are being developed under National Highways Development Project or NHDP. NHDP was started in Atal Bihari Vajpayee government time in 1998 and it is one of the success stories in our country. Now, government is thinking of this Bharat Mala or you can say to widen the scope of NHDP, Bharat Mala is contemplated now. It is for creation of economic corridors. At the same time, development of border and international connectivity roads, coastal and port connectivity roads and ultimately once Bharat Mala comes into force, then this NHDP will be subsumed into Bharat Mala. And another important aspect is at present in our country, the logistics cost is 18 percent. The logistics cost is 18 percent and the government's intention is to reduce it substantially and that is possible when world class infrastructure is developed. Right friends, we discussed several aspects in why and how. Please do join for other modules. Have a nice day. Thank you.